Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at Husqvarna 450 chainsaw uh, starter repair. So this is something pretty common that I see in the shop. Um, in this case it looks like the homeowner tried to fix it themselves. The reason I know that is because the starter was off of the chainsaw and that rope does not go through the eyelet of the starter cover. I'm pretty sure it didn't come from the factory like that. So whenever you're working on these things, uh, the first thing you ought to do is put some safety glasses on. Now the spring in here is captured underneath that disc, but we're going to be accessing that later. And if that spring went flying, you know, there's a lot of energy stored in that thing. And, you know, you poke an eye out. So... Let's uh, look at all this dirt on here for crying out loud. We're going to get rid of that. And when we put it back together, we're not going to grease anything. We don't want any dirt sticking and accumulating there. Now, I was just looking at the end of this spring, and I noticed it was damaged. I don't normally pull it through like that. I don't know why I did that. But there it is. I got to live with it. So this cassette that the spring is in, here's where we got to be careful that it doesn't pop out. And if you just keep your thumb over one edge like that, you'll be fine. So I got to I got to kind of back up what I screwed up here. There we go. Now I'm just going to drop this thing in the bucket. Bam. And then recover the uh plastic cassette. Which, um, as it turns out, I didn't need to do. You'll see in a minute. One important thing you want to do is clean everything and inspect it for cracks. Inspect that center stud on the orange cover there for cracks. You see we got our new cassette. The spring comes packaged that way. There's a safety wire holding the spring in the cassette. Once you cut that safety wire, you know, carefully set it in the orange cover. So I don't like using a lot of grease on starters. In fact, the factory doesn't even recommend greasing this center post here. I always do. The only thing they actually recommend doing is uh, lubricating the return spring. And you see I didn't do that. Uh, it's kind of a, I don't know, it just seems like anytime you get any grease or oil in there, it uh, dirt sticks to it. I mean, all those grates and fins in that cover are where all the intake cooling air comes into the engine. So there's a lot of dirt and dust moving right past that starter mechanism. Well, we carefully inspect the pulley, and if you don't see any cracks in it, then pay special attention to the area where the pulley uh, hooks into the return spring. The return spring was damaged and there's a chance that it could have rounded a corner or something on that plastic pulley and if it did we'll have to replace that. And if there's any cracks at all, especially now when the cold weather is setting in, uh, you got to replace them parts. So whenever I cut a piece of starter rope, I want to burn the end to keep it from fraying. And I always put it in a shop rag, melt the end, and then pull the rope through the rag. And what that does is leave me with a fairly pointy end on the rope. Works great for, um, you know, snaking it through little holes like on this pulley here. If you just heat it up and let it kind of mushroom out and bubble over you end up with something bigger diameter than the rope and it might not pass through all the the holes that it needs to go through now this next step sometimes 
it'll just go right together. I mean, there's the notch that has to match up with the spring. Sometimes it goes together like it did right here. Other times it takes several F-bombs to get it lined up. Uh, but we got it on the first shot, so that's bonus. Now the pulley has a little notch right there that the rope can fit into. And that notch allows you to stick the rope in there, wind up the pulley, you know, the rope will clear the orange housing then. Now take special note of the spring. One side the spring winds flush all the way and on the other side it's kind of inset a little bit and that inset side goes down. And when you're putting it into the pulley you want to take, you know, look at the hole in the pulley. Make sure that that spring never rode up and out of that hole which has happened. I've seen it. And then that hole gets a taper on the end of it and the spring will keep popping out of it. So that's one more thing you got to look at. Because we don't know the length of the rope, we're just going to put a loose figure eight knot on the end of it. Just so we don't lose it if we uh, put some tension on a spring and the rope slips out of our hand or something like that. So now you can see I'm able to wind the spring. I don't know what I got, about four turns on there. And then we'll let it wind up. Now my goal is always to get as much rope on the pulley as I can without it binding against the, you know, the side of the orange housing. Uh, but in combination with that, we want to make sure that when we pull the whole length of rope out, that the rewind spring isn't bottomed out. And I'll show you that in a minute. Right now I kind of got a little situation where the rope isn't quite dropping into the groove there on the pulley. Not sure what's going on. But I'm about to get interrupted here. Boys on the south side of the shop are going to run a lawnmower through my area. Filthy disgusting four strokes. All right, well, whatever was going on with that rope seems to have cleared itself up. It's winding up on the pulley now the way it's supposed to. So I can live with that. The rope was a little bit too long, so we're going to move our knot down. And once we have the knot in place, I guess we got to cut the end and, and melt it too, don't we? Yeah, she's winding up decent now. Now I pull all the rope out, all the way, and once I do that, you still want to be able to turn that pulley. That'll let you know that you haven't bottomed the spring. Um, if you're true to the workshop manual, then you'd be able to turn that pulley another half a revolution past uh, with rope being all the way out. This guy, he's looking for tools again. I Maybe because they're all red. I should just get all different colored tools, huh? Then I'd remember the side cutters is green, the screwdriver is blue. Yeah. So there's our assembled starter. When we put it on, you see how I pull the rope like that? That usually lets the pulley um, work its way into the starter dogs. And, and drop into place. So there you have it. That's all I got for you on the Husqvarna 450 chainsaw starter rebuild. Thanks for watching. Later.